Well, hold on now. Hold on now. Well, we, we don't have a match coming up, but we got to talk about this. Tony Khan comes out arm in arm with Dr. Martha Hart. Or no, actually, it was Tony Schiavone came out arm in arm with Tony Khan, and then Tony Khan welcomed everybody and introduced Dr. Martha Hart. Well, and Tony was... He was sounding like he was trying to talk and do the Tarzan yell at the same time. He was like, I'm going to say this about that. You know, like he was like Freddie Mercury trying to project at Wembley or whatever. Did you notice that even more so than normal? He was way up there. Not everyone can yell into a mic and... You know, Tony Khan, we see him at the press scrums and we see him do interviews. We know the way he talks. When he screams, it's not even like, it almost sounds like a fake yell. Like he's trying to (laughs) project his voice differently than the way it would normally project if he yelled. It doesn't work well, I don't think. Uh, So anyway, um, and this is the part where you had this on in the background as we were recording the first part of this show that never ends, ladies and gentlemen. And... (laughs) He introduces Dr. Martha. We have to say those three things in in order. She can never be Dr. Hart or Martha or Mrs. Anything, right? It's all three. But she started getting booed, and now I know why. And and she saved it at the end. But she, she said, I'm so happy to be here. I came from beautiful Canada, and it's a boo. But the, and then she said, "What well, uh, Canada is good friends and neighbors with the USA." And then, boom! I don't know, what the? Uh, but then she said, "But we are also proud to be members of the British Commonwealth." And then they're like, "Hey, okay." She should have. Thought- she should have fucked with them and kept doing it. But we're also next to Alaska. Boo! <laughs> and we have a wonderful trade agreement with Mexico. Man. Oh. Actually, it's, no, is anybody mad at Mexico in the world except us, a part of us? Uh, but Is Canada mad at anyone ever? No, I don't think, I think they were, that one time they got pissed off amongst themselves at Prince Edward Island, I think. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. But at they end? managed to work that out. Okay. Uh, but anyway, um, so uh, the reason why that she was there Apparently, I think I'm, I was trying to to divulge or not divulge this, but figure it out, divine this information was to wish all the contenders that won the Owen Hart cups, the very the men and women who she did not name because I think she might have forgot. She wishes them good luck tonight, but she. <laughs> Once that she did uh, did her geography lesson and started into the reason why she was there, did it seem to you that she kind of lost her train of thought and struggled to the finish line and got out of there? Not everyone is a public speaker, and I don't think Martha Hart, Dr. Martha Hart, is necessarily well-equipped. A lot of people can't speak to a room of 50,000 people. That's not easy. Yeah, I mean, it may have been one of those things. Yeah, I don't know, but it was very clunky, I thought. And you're back to calling them a room. It's a house. It's a whole house. Yes. A whole house. A mansion, even. The Wimbley, the Wimbley Manor. Oh. Um, <laughs> Lord Fogg. Uh, but then we got announced, or we got an- announced too. It, it was announced, and we were privy to it that Forbidden Door 2025 will take place in London on August 24 of 2025. So, the but but not, not, at least it was not divulged in Wembley Stadium. They didn't say where exactly it was going to be. So now they've given Grand Slam to Australia and Forbidden Door, which also has been in New York traditionally, right? Haven't they been there both times or no not both times but it's interesting if you think about it forbidden door i think has been in may i think one year it was in no new york. it was june last was it year. june well june. it was in new york one year was it in toronto uh the other year i forget 
but that's been in the spring. Well, basically, the two markets in North America that Ring of Honor would think about bringing in international talent. But go ahead. And Grand Slam at Arthur Ashe typically has been, what, September, October, in the fall. And now that's going to be in Australia at the beginning of the year. And Forbidden Door is getting pushed back a couple of months to bring it to London. Is there anything, when, when you're just moving pay-per-view events around like that, does it matter or does it matter more to the fans than any actual practical reason that would cause <sighs> issues with buys or anything? Um, it complicated, possibly. I think it, with these fans, I, I think it's the pay-per-view and what's on it, who's on it, and, you know, just the overall general malaise or lack thereof of whether the company is, you know, interesting or not. But for the WWF in the day and the WWE now, it would hurt them in terms of their marketing planning and their arena planning and their ancillary. Are we going to need a, a convention hall in this town in June of a year and a half from now because it's going to be this certain pay-per-view? Or you know, That would hurt that company because of so much of their marketing is based around the event you know not any of these things particularly are an event just because of the name of their pay-per-view they it's their their fan base that's going to buy those knows who's going to be on them and what's going on regardless of what the name of the pay-per-view is i think especially when one's all in one's all out One's world's end. You know, the forbidden door was can be open anytime you want it to be for that audience. And it just screws up TV you know, in a different season. It is interesting, though, because it has screwed up TV in the season, typically the spring the last few years. If you move it back two months and then, let's say, late June, July, August is all AEW, New Japan, CMLL. Is it better to screw up your TV in the summer months or in the spring months? Well, again, sometimes they don't fit the rules of thumb because their their ratings this spring were worse than their ratings last summer, weren't they? So they're kind of if they're continuing to trend ever so precipitously slightly downward, then by that point is it going to make a difference about the season? Or will they have stabilized by then? Well, I don't know if there'll be any stabilization, but we shall see.